Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Living Room Studio. I am your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and we are here going back into the showcase of the Surugaya Akihabara Ekimai shop. Now, if you are just joining us, this is a very small, like, basement shop <laughs> located right in front of Akihabara Station in, uh, the, in the middle of Tokyo. You know, Surugaya it's sort of selection of games is usually more the common with a little bit of uncommon stuff, but this has actually been so impressive of a showcase that I actually had to split this sort of reaction walkthrough into two separate videos. Now we're going to presumably look look like we're going back to some Famicom stuff uh, with another sprinkling of some even more uh, interesting games. Um, just to lay some of the base work for this video, um, Sudagaya includes the price of tax, so Japan's 10% sales tax, into the price of its games, but I can't remember if it does tax-free. So if you're visiting Japan, a lot of stores will do tax-free shopping for you, but I don't know if Sudagaya will do it, and I don't know if this particular one will do it, because there's actually a lot of different Sudugayas in the Akihabara area. Um, some of them will focus on, like, models, um, anime figures. There's the video game-specific shop. This is a newer shop. It's, I think, opened two years ago, I want to say, and it is like one one floor is models, one floor is anime figures. This basement, very small cramped area is just video games. So without further ado, we're just going to go right into the games. Starting at the at the right, we've got the TV show. I've never seen this before. This is a PC Engine CD game, no OB mind you. It is going for uh what is that? $280. Um, I should note, and I actually just looked at some pictures I had taken previously. Um, as far as I know, Sudagaya does not price differently depending on if the CD game has the obi, that spine cover. With Japanese games, if you're not familiar, Japanese CD-based games, that includes PC Engine CD, uh, Mega Drive CD, uh, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, even Dreamcast, with their jewel cases, when they were sold first sold at retail, they had these sort of spine little like small paper um, covers that go on, on, on the spine, on the, 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 the left side of the jewel case. Now, I don't see it here, so I'm presuming it does not have it. This can actually, on an expensive game like this, like the TV show, um, it can actually be uh, like 40 or $50 piece of paper, depending on how expensive it would be. So I would expect that you could probably find this cheaper, actually, in a comparable condition at a place like, say, Mandarake, simply because they would price it according to not having that item that makes it complete. Now, if you're like me and you don't care, it, it's sort of a nice to have. Now, but then there are also collectors who they must have the obi. And just be prepared that if you want the obi, you're going to have to pay extra for it, unless you're at Sudugaya. Now, if you could find a copy of this game with the obi, you'd actually probably save a lot of money compared to if you bought it at, at say, again, Mandarake, where they would probably price it higher because it was complete. Now, to the left of it, let's let's go at the top. Let's save gimmick for last because that's the most interesting to me. Now, we've got um, Burger Time going for... What is that? Fifty-six dollars. I love the the old Namco games. Actually, had like numbers on them. So this is the eleventh, presumably Namco game that came out for the Famicom. I don't even actually know how far they got, but it's really I love they did that for a while. I don't believe they they did it for all their games though. Uh, eventually, uh, next we've got Ducktales. What is that? Wampaku, Wampaku Daku. Um, Daibo or Bolkan DuckTales. Uh, that is going for $100 complete in box. Actually, looks like it's in good shape. Loose, uh, man, maybe 10, 20 bucks. It's one of those um, sort of not exactly uncommon, but in that 10 to $20 range. Um, beneath it, we've got Guevara going for $70. Now, I think if it, yeah, if because it includes tax, that's probably not a bad price for it. Um, I'd hope it was maybe $50. Um, it's a shooter created by SNK. It's one of those that I've sort of always wanted, but just never had 60 bucks to shell out for it. Uh, what's the most interesting and may end up being the most interesting for this whole entire showcase is that copy of Gimmick. Now, it's got some, this is a problem with most gimmick labels that I've ever seen, is that the, the glue, I think, is starting to brown 
look, it's like a, it's like a, no, actually at this point, it is a 30 year old game uh, at this point. So like, look, this is just what's going to happen to all of the copies of gimmick um, here. It's actually, com- I have seen copies of gimmick in comparative condition for $300 and like loose like this with the same amount of label wear. This is going for $230. This is absolutely insane. If you want a loose copy of gimmick, this is the one that I would buy because I've never seen it this cheap. Even at Mandarake, which is starting to sort of slash the prices on its loose Famicom games. This is happening to even the rare games for the Famicom. Famicom prices are really starting to come down. I don't know if that's true of the stock that's available outside of Japan, but definitely the stuff that you're finding in Japan is going down in price, which is really heartening for me because I want to I want to buy more Famicom games. (laughs) Looks like we've got some even more interesting stuff over there on the left. I hope I angle myself properly. Uh, We've got, what is that? Trance. Uh, Dragon's Lair. I don't even... Oh, is is it? Oh, (laughs) sorry. I was misreading. It was hard to read the katakana with the label over it. Uh, But we've got, yeah, it's just a copy of Dragon's Lair for the Famicom. Although, unfortunately, I cannot see the price. Uh, Then we've got Bare Knuckle 3. Now, this is an interesting case study because Bare Knuckle 3, it is the the, the last Bare Knuckle, the last Streets of Rage game that came out for the Mega Drive. I have not played it myself, but I love the first two games. Now, I think we just saw in the last video, in this same showcase, we saw Bare Knuckle 3 going for $110.00. It was, uh, what was it, $1,200. Sorry, $1,200. No, no, no. It was 1,000, no, sorry, 12,000 yen, I want to say. Or it might have been 13,000 yen. I can't remember, even though I just shot that video like 15 minutes ago. This is going for 9,000 yen. So that's about a $20 or $30 difference just for the box. It is crazy to me that Bare Knuckle 3, just the cartridge, is going for $81 after tax. I've seen, like, if you look at that copy of DuckTales on the right, that's like a a $20 game at most loose. And to see it go for $100 complete in box, that's a huge price difference where you don't see that big of a price difference on Bare Knuckle 3. Now, why is that happening? Well, probably for one, Bare Knuckle 3 was not printed that much because it was a as presumably late release. It was the third in a series that had probably been declining in popularity, even though as cool as the series was. Um, so maybe there's just not that many loose copies out there. Uh, as the opposite, and also something for the Mega Drive you have to recognize is a lot of particularly the late releases, especially in Japan. The thing about that's always sort of perplexed me when I see the price is like, why are why are Japanese Mega Drive games so expensive? It's just because the Mega Drive was not that popular in Japan, whereas it was more popular in Europe and the United States. You had much more print a print quantity um, outside of Japan, and that's why all those games are cheaper, but then you have some of the more expensive games just in Japan, which is sort of the opposite for basically everything else. Because a lot of the Famicom games or a lot of the, um, well, yeah, a lot of the Famicom games are just much cheaper in Japan than the NES games are in America and Europe. It's sort of one of those things. Um, so <laughs> uh, hopefully hopefully you're learning something there if you're into the Mega Drive. Uh, and then we've also got another Famicom game there that I just can't recognize and I can't read the label. Uh, hopefully it's, it's by Athena and it came out in uh, 1990 and it's going for $56. Now, moving over here, ooh, we got some even more interesting stuff. So, we, what is that? K- Ronark? What is that? That's going for $150? Is that for the Mega Drive? Looks like it's in the plastic clamshell, so I'm inclined to say that it is uh, for the Mega Drive. And then we've got... Man, I can't... Oh, Pyramid. Sorry, I'm trying to read what that... So, to the right of that game... Oh. I'm trying to, was that Sword Master? Is that what it is? On the bottom right, I think it's Sword Master. I can't tell. I'm just trying to read this, you know, small pixel. I should have shot this in 4K. I am a fool um, for shooting it in 1080p. Um, then I could maybe make out what that katakana says on that label. Um, to the In the center bottom, we've got Pyramid in that crazy, like, green and blue font. Um, be- absolutely beautiful. That is going for uh, $160. Wow, is that... That looks like it's an MSX game. That doesn't look like it's a Famicom game. Yeah, that's strange. I've never seen that before. Uh, then we've got Bloody Vault. Is that what that says? It's got like a, um, it's the Hue card that's got like an Arnold Schwarzenegger 
looking guy on it. Uh, that's going for $55. I've never seen that game. Uh, then we've got um, the the Castlevania parody game. Uh, I, I wish I knew what it was. I never bought it uh, when I was in Japan. That was uh, $130. I want to say it's like a quiz game or is that a platformer? There's one that is a quiz game and one that's a platformer, I think, uh, weirdly enough. Speaking of Castlevania, we've actually got two more Castlevania games here. We've got um, the the last Castlevania for the Game Boy Color. I don't know what it's called in English. Um, it's the first one, I believe, to star a female character. That's going for $140. It's like, it's not Circle of the Moon, but I think a moon is involved with it. Um, it's some, it's one that I've, I've wanted to get for a long time, but like most of the Castlevania games, it has become very, very expensive. Although I want to say I've seen it cheaper somewhere else. I want to say I've seen it at like Trader for like $110, $120. $140 seems a bit a bit pricey uh, to me. Beneath it, um, on the very bottom, you can see that you've got um, which, whichever Belmont it is. I want to say Simon, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, it might be Victor. It's been a while since I played the first Castlevania. Um, but that is going for... It's the it's the Japanese release of the original Castlevania for the NES slash Famicom. It is going for $230. Now, that's actually really expensive. I remember buying mine at Mandarake, which you think would be overpriced for $100 uh, when I picked it up. Now, the thing about Castlevania in Japan is that it was originally released on the Famicom disc system. Now, that version usually goes for about $50. It's a bit hard to find. The cartridge version did not come out until like, I want to say like 90, 91, maybe even 92. It was part of this, there was this wave of like Legend of Zelda, um, Castlevania, and I want to say a couple of other games uh, that came out as cartridges because cartridges had finally evolved to the point where they could fit all the data that they had put onto the discs. Um, but because it was a late Famicom release, I think by the point that the Super Famicom had already been released, so it just was not that well printed as it had been in America. Because, I mean, what's what's Castlevania in America? Like $20? It's not that expensive. Whereas in Japan, it's like 10 times as expensive. This, though, I mean, I've seen it complete in box for like $360. So, I, yeah, I would not spend more than 100 maybe even 120 on a loose copy of Castlevania. And because it's one of those games where, yes, interest in the Famicom has died down, the money's moving elsewhere, but it's also a Castlevania game. Castlevania has remained popular and remains very, very expensive to the point where most of the games are still slightly increasing in value. But even still, I wouldn't spend more than $100, $120 on a loose Castlevania unless you can't find it anywhere else, but I'm pretty sure you can. So in between those two Castlevania games, um, in the middle, we've got, um, that's Metarot. That, for some reason, all of the Metarot games still seem to hold their value, or at least most of them do, to the point where seeing this for $90 does not really surprise me. I've known and seen other games go for $50, $60, but I don't know about this game specifically. I only recognize it because I recognize the character back from like the late 90s, if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, it's not a game that I've ac actually played myself. So we've got even more. Wow, okay, yeah. So we've got on the bottom left is the most expensive Super Famicom game in its loose loose form. It's all it's the most expensive in terms of loose game as well as complete in box. It is Rendering Ranger R2. Uh, this I can't remember. There, there's a guy who released it. I can't remember what the name is, but he's some famous video game person. Um, it's also the studio that released Super Turrican. Um, it's a sh Rendering Ranger R2. is sort of like a side-scrolling shooter. Uh, it was. It's one of those games that it was like it like is a miracle that it came out to begin with. It only came out in Japan. And this copy is going for six hundred and forty dollars. Uh, if it is if it is complete, uh, then it's going for it can go upwards for two thousand uh, dollars very easily. I've seen that um, price pretty commonly, even at Sudagai, even at Trader Mandarake. This is another game that I would really caution you. If you're here, it's going to be genuine. But if you're buying it online, I would be super careful when when purchasing a game like this online, simply because it is very easy to go on, say, like Alibaba and get um, or AliExpress and get a reproduction uh, 
copy of this that can look pretty close to the real thing uh, to the point where, yeah, I would be hesitant buying this online unless you know exactly what you're looking at. There's actually a video that I would really love to make of just trolling eBay and looking at uh, counterfeit copies. <laughs> but this is, this one's most likely going to be fine just because, yeah, they have people that inspect this. Although, yeah, well, that's, that's a whole separate video. Uh, looking at the game, the Game Boy game that's above it, this is going to be Trip. This is Trip World. I feel like I've seen this more expensive elsewhere, so this might be a deal, but don't quote me on it. It's going for $120. There are a couple of Sunsoft games that came out for the Game Boy that are very expensive. This is also loose. Um, keep that in mind. And then we've got R Type, but I can't tell what system it's for. Yeah, I can't tell, but it's going for fifty-seven dollars, and I don't recognize, I don't recognize the cover that much to where I can say what system it's for. Maybe the PC Engine, but that would be overpriced. PC Engine R Type is like what forty dollars? It's not that expensive. Ooh, wow, a lot of the most expensive stuff here. Okay, um, so let's start at the top left. That looks like, oh man, yeah, no, no, it is. Um, that is. That is the, I want to say, D-Link cable for the GameCube. In Japan, there was this, it's sort of like VGA, where it was this, it was this HD, like, computer connector system that came out. Um, and it's sort of like the Japanese version of VGA is what I want to say, but that's probably inaccurate. Um, it's one of those, it's the way you can get, um, they did release component cables, uh, in Japan for the GameCubes, and those are also very expensive. The D-Link cables are slightly less expensive, but that's just because TVs don't really support it these days um, and didn't really that much back in the day. Um, it's going for $90. Um, also very expensive. Wow, that's to the right. We've got, oh, I can't. Hold on, what is it? K -au -yu -ge Gitai. No, that's I'm um, I, I'm sorry. I can't really read um, the very very small katakana um, that's above that kanji. I don't know what that is, but it is a five hundred and forty dollar Mega Drive CD game. That is the most expensive Mega Drive CD game that I've ever seen. I can't tell you that much about it. Looks like it's probably a mahjong game. What is it? It's like Kira Kira Raki. <laughs> Takarabako. It's like um, sparkling lucky treasure chest. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. Um, and then on the bottom left, even without the manual, it is a copy of Magical Chase for the PC Engine going for $310. To the right, we have what I thought was the most expensive a PlayStation game, but I have since seen one game that is more expensive. This is making this the second most expensive PlayStation game. It is Serial Experiments Lane going for $430. Now, I have seen it go for about $30 less at Trader. This does have the Obi, though, so you might be saving money compared to what you would find it at Mandarake. That is crazy. I cannot believe that they're $400 plus. Uh, PlayStation games these days. And then to the right, we've got Twinkle Star Sprites going for $75. Now, I will issue some caution. There is Keisunashi. Oh, okay, yeah. So, all right. So, the disc apparently has a scratch on it or maybe some small scratches. It's they. All of these games have been tested and work fine. However, this does not have the case, but Sega Saturn cases... Um, the jewel cases are just regular CD cases, um, so it's not like you, you could find a replacement quite easily. I would say. That's wow! I cannot believe I, I didn't even I didn't even recognize that in the store. Like that's the thing. That's what I. That's sort of why I actually love um, doing these kinds of videos. Is just because, like you know, I'm just scanning over stuff. But then when you see something like that, it's absolutely mind blowing. And then some wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's save the sexy stuff for last, the inappropriate for YouTube stuff. Uh, so we've got Macross um, on the top left for the Super Famicom going for $150. I want to say that's a shooting game. It's one of the cool shooters for the for the Super Famicom. I don't think the loose version is that expensive. It's something that you could, I want to say I've seen it for $30 or $40. Don't quote me on it. 
Now that's interesting. Okay, so all right. So yeah, let's just, we'll do, then we'll do Ketsui uh, for the Nintendo DS. Now that is, man, maybe I wish I'd, I'd bought this. It's going for a hundred dollars thereabouts. Um, Kitsui, it's the shooter that came out for the, um, I want to say the, the first one came out for the Dreamcast. Um, there's one, there was like a re-release of one of the arcade versions that came out for the PS4 quite recently. And then you've got this version for the DS that, yeah, it's about a hundred dollars. That's about what I would expect to see it elsewhere. And then I think... If my eyes do not deceive me, you can see to the left of that cotton, very obscured, um, is that is Ikaruga for the Dreamcast going for $60 thereabouts. Um, it does not have the case, um, which is points against it, as well as the CD has been scratched, or the, the sorry, the GD-ROM, or whatever they called it for the Dreamcast. This, I actually just saw it at Super Potato, or in one of the videos that I was doing, I saw it in Super Potato. Um, with the OB, it was $90 there, although I personally complete would not spend over $70 um, for, for Ikaruga. Um, although, it, as amazing of a game as, as it is. Uh, then we've got to the right, we've got um, Magical Night Dreams Cotton 2. Even without the case, even with some scratches on the disc, it is going for $130. Cannot believe how expensive uh, the cotton games have gotten. Next, and then to the right, we've got Pokemon Ultra Moon. Now, I cannot tell if this is some kind of special edition, but Ultra Moon, like... Ultra Moon's like a $20, $30 game. I do not know why they are, why they are selling this at... $55 or $53. That's something's up with that. Maybe it's a special like edition you got through the mail or something. Uh, to the right, we've got, um, what is that? Suchi Pike? No, I can't read the weird. It's something. I don't know. It's a, <laughs> I'm presuming it's a sexy Sega Saturn game by Jalico. The Japanese Saturn had a lot of like photo albums and like sexy Mahjong games that came out for it. Maybe this is one of those. Or is that super? Oh no! Sorry, <laughs> Suchi Pai. Is that what that is? I can't. I'm. I'm sorry. I can't read the label. It's going for ninety dollars. I hope nobody on YouTube bans me for this. <laughs> and then we've got the big one, the Love Plus Edition Nintendo DSi LL. You've got the special edition DSi there. That's got the the cute anime girl on it. Plus Love Plus, the DS game. That's crazy. It is going for a hundred and fifty dollars. I couldn't tell. I'm not really in the market for DSIs or for Love Plus. Don't know if that's a good deal. But if you want it, it is right there. Is there anything else in the showcase? Nope. The video is about to end. So I'm gonna call it here. Absolutely phenomenal showcase. I didn't even when I was there filming it, I didn't recognize all of the cool stuff in there um, that it actually had, especially with all the stuff they just cram into there. So it's very, very obscure, both in terms of what the game actually is and in actually physically seeing it. <laughs> so a lot of interesting stuff in that showcase. Generally, I'd say fair prices on a lot of stuff. Weirdly overpriced on a couple of things, but in general, actually, yeah, it seemed, seemed pretty good. Um, there was actually a couple things in there that uh, if I had the money, uh, I, I wish I had picked up. But for now, we're just going to call it here. That has been the showcase in the Sudagaya Akihabara Ekimai location, the one that's right in front of the train station in Akihabara, Tokyo. Thanks for watching and a big mahalo to all my Patreon supporters.